On this week's show, Liberty Basketball faces Villanova in the NIT, and Darius McGee gets some well-earned attention. Plus, the emotional story of a Liberty baseball player who lives every day with the memory of 17 lives lost. It's all straight ahead. Flame Central starts now. Liberty basketball is not over. The Flames look to make right. some noise in the NIT tournament, while the Lady Flames also look toward the postseason. Hey there, and welcome inside our Flames Central Studios. So glad you decided to join us this week. I'm Emily Austin. He's Matt Warner. Yeah, we have an exciting show ahead. Spring sports, of course, they're in full swing. We'll check in with baseball and softball in just a moment. But we have to start things off on the hardwood. That's right. Who said you have to be playing in the NCAA tournament to get your dose of March Madness? Also hope your bracket's still holding up. There's still plenty of quality teams competing in the NIT, including the Flames' first-round opponent, Villanova. Remember, just last season, these same Wildcats were in the NCAA Final yeah. Four. You may also remember Darius McGee. Yeah, he didn't hit a three-pointer in that ASUN championship game, so he just wanted to set the record straight early in this one. Nails a triple for the first bucket of the game. Then the Flames showing. Matt, you learned it in kindergarten. Sharing is caring. Mm. Great ball movement. Ends with a Colin Porter three. I heard on his way back down the court, he whispered to the Wildcats that he's still supposed to be in high school. Eric Dixon, <laughs> yeah, he didn't like that too much. He'll slam at home to tie it up at 23 all. Less than two to play in the first. D. McGee from the NIT logo. Are you kidding me? To the second. You know, this was a tight battle throughout Liberty with a seven-point lead with 7.50 to go. But Villanova's Brandon Slater trying to claw back into it. He finished with 18, but McGee reminding everyone down the stretch, this is my house. Big three to go late. He had a game-high 26. The Flames hang on to win it 62-57. Here's Coach McKay about taking down Villanova. A win that will value a ton. Uh, Villanova has a winning DNA, and having been to three Final Fours in the last seven years, there's a lot of guys that have, you know, touched a lot of success, and you could tell they were never going to give up. They were never going to allow themselves to get too far behind because they, they've got a ton of character and a, con a ton of toughness. So does our team. And, uh, really proud of our group. Thought we uh, did enough to win the game. We stick with hoops to bring you da -da -da, breaking news. Darius McGee is being honored. Again, he's already a finalist for both National Player of the Year awards. Now he's being named a 2022-23 AP All-America Men's Basketball Honorable Mention selection. When you rewrite the record books, I guess this is what you should expect. McGee is one of only 32 players nationally to be included on the All-America listing. Well, it was an incredible season for the Flames, and head coach Richie McKay is being recognized for it as well. McKay was named a finalist for the Ben Job National Coach of the Year Award. This is an award given to the top minority coach in Division I basketball. Over the past five years, McKay has led the Flames to more than 130 wins, three NCAA tournament appearances, and one NIT appearance. The Flames have also posted seven straight 20-win seasons with McKay at the helm. All right, to women's hoops. The Lady Flames playing in the WNIT on the road at Bowling Green. Liberty fell behind big early, trailing 30-10 after the first quarter. They would battle back, however, cutting that deficit to five in the second half, but they just couldn't dig themselves out of that early hole. Maya Berkman with 16 points, 13 boards, as the Lady Flames end their season with a record of 24-9. Well, Liberty Baseball is in the midst of a brutal stretch in the schedule. After playing three games on the road at number 12 East Carolina, the Flames returned home this week to find number four Wake Forest waiting on them. The Demon Deacons boast one of the best offenses in all the land, and that offense would be on display in this contest. They wasted no time. First inning, one of the nation's leaders in home runs, added another to his total. Brock Wilkin is 13th long ball of the year. That three-run shot put the Demon Deacons out in front. The Flames will fall behind 7-0 in this game before Cam Foster put them on the board. An RBI single in the fourth brought in three Hillier. But those Wake Forest bats, man, they weren't done. Another three-run home run, this time from Adam Sassiri. And the Demon Deacons looked every bit the fourth-ranked team in the country as they cruised to a 12-5 win.
We stay on the diamond for our next feature. Andrew Jenner is a transfer from Winthrop University. The infielder has played baseball his entire life and has always loved this game. But today, he brings a different, deeper passion to the field that stems from a tragic event that took place on Valentine's Day five years ago. Here's why he plays for 17. February 14th is probably one of the most important days to me in my life. It changed my life forever five years ago. Heard gunshots. And then from that point, just kind of looked at my teacher, told him that that was not fireworks, those were gunshots. And from that point, it just kind of, you know, all went black for me. So I was born in Boca Raton, Florida. It's like a vacation when you come down, man. It's like, you know, there's nothing like it, in my opinion. It's just so relaxing. Every time I'm home, it's like a breath of fresh air for me. Yeah, I always enjoy going home, going to the beach. We moved from Boca, which is about 10 minutes um, down the road um, when I was one years old, and we've been there ever since. It's about a mile from my high school and the town of Parkland. Childhood life was, you know, it was fun. Uh, a lot of beach, a lot of baseball, a lot of different sports. Uh, you know, we kind of bounce around from soccer to baseball um, to a little bit of football here and there. So always active, always doing something uh, outside. My first word was actually ball. So I picked up a ball ever since I was a, a little kid and it kind of stuck with me ever since then. <laughs> My first couple years of high school were way more than I expected it to be. I got there my freshman year from a charter middle school. I uh, transferred in to come play baseball for my travel baseball coach. Right away, I had a lot of friends from that. So I kind of settled in very, very well. My junior year, got to school. You know, it was just a normal day. We had a fire alarm earlier that day, so we all had to evacuate and went back to class, went through our day, and you know, towards the end of the day, another uh, fire alarm went off. So we evacuated again. Possible shots fired at Soma Douglas High School. And we are coming on the air at this hour with news of a school shooting in South Florida. This took place in Parkland, Florida. There's an active shooter situation in South Florida. We don't know, but we're, we're entering the building. No word yet on casualties, but the report. When you hear that, that noise, it's, you know, it's a distinct noise, you don't really you don't really think twice about that. We moved out to the field out behind school and I gathered with all my classmates and a bunch of other classmates. We lost cell service at, I would probably say 2.40, which is, you know, I'd say 15 minutes after everything happened. I was able to get through to my mom one time, uh, just told her, please pick me up at Walmart. And I said, I'm gonna go, I love you. And I took off and, and ran to the nearest Walmart. From that point, my mom picked me up. We live about two minutes from school. I got home, still really didn't have a good idea of what happened. Turn on the news. We're still seeing students just a few seconds ago being escorted out, walking out with their hands up. You see police. Sat down with my parents, and then realized and kind of soaked in uh, what I was a, a part of. I didn't know, you know, how my life would change. Here's what we know at this hour. At least 17 people have been killed, students and adults. At least 15 injured in the shooter. It was tough to, to hear the names of the victims. Really took a big toll on me to, to see how many people it affected. The day after uh, everything happened, my team and I, we gathered as a group. We got our tears out, we talked. We hugged, we hung around each other, and that was probably one of the best moments of my life because I, I didn't know what, what to feel at that time. Um, that brought us together as a group, as a band of brothers, more than anything. We used those two days that week as our uplifting spirits for the year. Uh, instead of you know playing for us, it was for the 17 people that lost their lives at our school. It was a tough, a tough patch for a couple of 
you know, a couple years being around a lot, a lot of people, and it didn't feel safe to me. Places didn't feel safe. You know, going out to the field every day, taking 100 ground balls, uh, taking 100 swings a day, you know, back at that time, it was, you know, all I wanted to do. I've really found it to be, you know, my safe place. You know, baseball is my everyday escape. I just got to go out there and, and play and be the best person I could be because there are 17 people that, you know, lost their lives in high school, didn't get to live the lives that we all live today. So I put it right here, MSC 17, right here. You know, it's a great honor to represent all of Parkland and all of South Florida. It just means more to me to go out there every day and push myself because I know that that's what they would want for all of us. Just an incredible story. Great job by you producing that, by the way. But you think about Andrew, so impressive the fact that, you know, people go through a tragedy. A lot of times they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to bring it up. They don't want any memories of it. He's the exact opposite. He wants to share this story to, to kind of honor the, the 17 lives that were lost and also to show people like, listen, this is part of who I am now mm -hmm. and the way I live is affected by what took place. And I, I think it's an inspiration to a lot of people that maybe go through uh, something hard in their lives as well. Yeah, early in the season, he got up in front of the entire team and talked about this tragedy and just really wanting to help others with anxieties and mental health yeah. issues. So it's really cool. I mean, it's hard enough being a transfer. So right. uh, a lot of courage. Out of Impressive young man. All right, we stay on the diamond as we continue forward. And how, how about Liberty <laughs> alum Noah Skiro in the Ooh. World Baseball Classic, huh? On Tuesday in a must-win game for his nation of Canada, he threw five scoreless innings against Columbia, allowing just two hits, striking out five. Skiro was credited with the win in what was the biggest start of his pro career. As we told you a few weeks ago, Skiro, a Phillies prospect, knocking on the door of the big leagues, and an experience like this will certainly help. All right, let's take it to the track, more specifically the field. Liberty's duo of shot put thrower Warren Barrett and high jumper Kennedy Salter both received second team All-America honors after competing in the NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championships. Both athletes placed 15th in their respective events. Barrett threw 59 feet, three inches on his third and final throw. He is the first D1 indoor men's shot put All-American in Liberty and a Sun Conference history. Salter cleared seven feet, half an inch on his third attempt to take that 15 spot. I'm really excited to see how these guys carry this experience and success into the outdoor season, which opens at High Point this weekend. Yeah, you heard Emily talking about the outdoor season getting cranked up, and the Flames bring back this year an A-Sun champion and second-team All-American performer in the discus. His name is Kevin Nedrick. And while the Jamaican native has performed on some big stages before, I'm not sure anything could have prepared him for this edition of Rhett's Rules. Hey there, friends. Welcome to another Rhett's Rules. Rhett McGibbon here alongside Kevin Nedrick. We're going to throw this, uh, this discus here in just a second. But Kevin, first of all, how'd you get into the sport? In high school, I did the one and two. Kind of go to practice every day and I saw the guys doing the disc and I'm very fascinated by it. So I kind of stopped by. My coach asked if I wanted to do it and he was like, I was like, yeah. I did the disc, went pretty far, and he was like, next day when you come to practice, just come to the discus area. I don't know if me throwing this is gonna be fascinating, but we're about to find out, okay? Yep. <laughs> All right, let's get to it over here. Here's a look at the rules. Two throws per contestant, and the farthest throw wins. I'm pretty sure you know how this is gonna end up. I need to see how this is done, so Kevin goes first. One key aspect I'm noticing is the walk-up routine. Oh my. You can tell by that reaction from our <laughs> cameraman Helmut. That disc flew a lot further than any of us expected. Just to give you an idea, he chucked it the entire length of this field. On to throw two. Another bomb. No wonder Kevin took home the ace on crown in the discus and went to Eugene, Oregon for nationals. I'm in disbelief. First, the walk-up routine. There you go. Yeah, my kids got to teach me that one. <laughs> Not pretty. All right, let's see. Initial throw, and yeah, Kevin is a good dude clapping for me. 
most would have pointed and laughed. Per Kevin's recommendation, no footwork this time, just a clean throw. Not impressive at all. And Kevin clearly wins round one. All right, Kevin, tell the people at home what you were telling me. You were more nervous for our competition than Eugene, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a good guy. <laughs> All right, time now for some disc golf and the Rets rules change. Take a look at the rules, but it's going to be a par three. We'll see who has the least amount of shots. Least amount of throws to make it into the cage wins. If tied, we go to a break the ice style competition to declare the winner. Neither one of us have any disc golf experience. So here we are. Finely tuned athlete versus the gray bearded dad of many. I get the pleasure of going first and truthfully, I was pretty hyped about my tee shot. I landed down the fairway in the middle of the course. Kevin's turn. This is either going to travel a country uh, mile uh, or go off target oh due to his power. Yeah, that's gonna be a bit to come yeah. back. Off target it is. I'm feeling fairly confident as we get ready for our second shot. Kevin with a nice hook to oh, slide oh. it into the putting area. That was a that was a nice approach. That's nice. Well, I bring it straight in for an easy tap in. <laughs> nice. All right. <laughs> We've been bad if you miss. All right. So we both make it in three. Now we head to our tiebreaker. First to make it combined with an opponent's miss is declared the winner. I'll go first here. Right. Don't feel nervous. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> nervous. Don't feel, just don't even think about it. Ah, oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't happen. Congrats. <laughs> good job, man. Thanks. <laughs> you know what? I feel pretty good about this. Thanks for being a good sport and coming out and playing today. No problem. Thanks, All right, man. good stuff. Oh, sweet victory. A long time coming for me on Rhett's Rules. Coming up, Liberty Softball looks to stay hot, and we hear from head coach Dot Richardson. Plus, more Rhett McGibbon. He joins us for a brand new Warm Hot and Fuego. That's when Flame Central returns. Welcome to Liberty University's online programs, where living out your calling with integrity is what you train to do. And getting ready for the future doesn't mean missing out on the now. Because a university is more than buildings and books. And an education should set you free, not fence you in. Welcome to Liberty's global campus, where distance learning was pioneered and evolved into one of the top ranked schools in the nation. Where protecting your budget, your time, and your education isn't just a theory, it's our priority. Here, degrees in your field reflect industry demands and help you get ahead of the competition. Where college comes to you, but you can come to college too. Game day, homecoming, graduation day. Your school, your values, your experience, your choice. Welcome to Liberty University, where we train champions for Christ. Get your career started on the right track. Let Liberty University help you get on the road to success. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're so fortunate that we have a Liberty student in William Byron. Uh, I tell people all the time who've never been here, it kind of reminds me of people that have never been to Hendrick Motorsports in, in a way where you go, have you ever been to Liberty University? Because if you haven't, you need to check it out. I mean, it's it's such a beautiful campus, um, you know, and, and, and it's, it's impressive. But I think what's most impressive is, is the people that I have interacted with. Hendrick Motorsports is about people. We, we talk about this all the time, that what makes a great race car are the people that build them, um, the engineers that develop the, the, the you know, technology or the setups or the things that make that car go faster, the, 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 the athletes that are the pit crews, the drivers, the crew chiefs, all across the board, it's all about the people. And what Liberty's been able to do is bring 
some of the highest quality individuals to the sport, to our team, um, and, and to Hendrick Motorsports, um, you know, to elevate up the whole company through the, the, the just the higher level of education that, that they bring. So, we, you know, we, we, we love the partnership because it's a lot more than just putting the Liberty name and sponsor on the car. Welcome back to the show. Liberty Softball has been on an absolute tear lately. Winners of 12 straight. They hit the road this week to be an A-Sun play. On Wednesday, they would kick things off against Eastern Kentucky. You might remember last season, Liberty went 23-1 in conference play. That'll be tough to top. They certainly started on the right foot in this one and started with some power. Home runs from Savannah Woodard, Megan Fortner, and KK Madry helped the Lady Flames build a 7-0 lead. Meanwhile, in the circle, Carly Keeney tied a career high with eight strikeouts and Liberty wins its A-Sun opener by a final of 7-3. Yeah, solid start to A-Sun play for the Lady Flames. It's been such a treat to follow this softball program because almost every year when we catch up with head coach Dot Richardson, she just raves and raves about her players and her coaches, where they've improved, how they may be different from years past. So, Dot, what makes this team so special this season? This team is the strongest uh, athletic team that we have. Ooh, and if, wow. if mentally uh, they get there, which it looks like they're having a lot of fun now. Yeah, all right. Winning does yeah. that, doesn't it? Like yeah, it winning does. makes everybody feel real good. The key is we have the ability to do a lot of short game, mm. like slaps, quick bunts, all those things, yeah. steals. Uh, it's just fun to see them play. You know, it's fun when the fans watching, I remember sometimes I'll look and say, okay, we got a, a slow batter up, but has power, yeah. right? So we're, we're going through the lineup like that. And now it's kind of fun because we can play a lot of hit and runs if we need to, a lot of steals, slap and runs, um, you know, squeeze plays, a lot of different things. Do you want to be motivated to be inspired? Well, then you need to check out our entire conversation with Dot because she does just that. She's really just a ball of energy and so much fun to talk to. So be sure you download and subscribe to the Flame Central podcast. If you didn't know, it's powered by Alcova Mortgage. All right, let's shift gears to lacrosse. The Lady Flames dropped its last contest to number eight ranked James Madison, but bounced back in a big way, taking down Pitt on the road in a below freezing snowy matchup. I mean, come on, isn't it spring break? Couldn't they just go down south? Anyway, Liberty closed it out with a 5-0 fourth quarter run to win it all, 13-7. Two Lady Flames netted four goals apiece. They will head to Notre Dame up next. All right, we're joined now by Liberty's second favorite Canadian. Sorry, I think Noah Skira yeah, got you this week. Good. Sorry, Red, we'll work back up the power <laughs> rankings here. Uh, warm, hot, and fuego. Yeah. Got play player moment from the past week in Liberty Athletics. Anything special for this, yeah. this week, Red? It's a national holiday. Is Every it? day in the life of Emily Austin, national everything you do is right day. Ah, yes. boy, is yeah. it that the truth? I <laughs> yeah. feel like I live that nightmare every day. All right, hey, let's start with warm, Red. <laughs> yeah. What do you got? Uh, Mackenzie Lehman. Yeah. You know, we just talked about lacrosse a moment ago. You know, I was looking at this. You love those, like, winter weather games right and the right. snow's pounding down it's in your face your eyebrows are freezing up you know they're in pennsylvania <laughs> yeah. mckenzie layman mcmurray pennsylvania native wow. she says she's used to this i'm used to this right. kind of stuff comes out four goals in this game lacrosse is scheduled extremely tough early on in their non-conference play and so to see them come out with a big performance here against pitt and for layman who's leading the team in goals to get four yeah. and to lead them on to victory I think a big moment for them can be a real turning point. Yeah, hopefully a sign of things yeah. to come. All right, from warm, we go to hot. Your pick here is who? Yeah, Savannah Woodard. And this mm. young lady, you know, an Alabama transfer. Yeah. She's been there for quite some time. Any transfer takes a little bit of time just to kind of get into the flow of your new surroundings, sure. right? And I'll be honest, the batting average a little bit down for her. But then here comes Ball State. Base is loaded. And it's that moment like, okay, this could really Coming change parties, things for right. me. Exactly. Boom. Grand slam over the wall. All of a sudden, you're like, Oh, <sighs> weight lifted yes. off his shoulder. I'm contributing right, now, right. right? And then goes on. You saw she had another home run against Eastern Kentucky. Right. So snowball effect for her has been extremely solid on the infield for Liberty this year. Really nice piece. And you mentioned it, like softball rolling right now. Yeah. She's a big aspect of that. And it's been a lot of fun to watch. And all these new faces starting to get acclimated to the Liberty surroundings. Yeah. They're fun. It's coming together they at the right time for them. Yes. All right. 
Finally, in fuego, the top honor this week, Rhett, who we picking? I could shed a tear here. I oh, really no. could. This oh, could no. be this the last be time I get to say Darius McGee in fuego. Ah, oh, you're right. I know. It kind of, it, it, there is potential here. Yeah. This could be the last He's go round. probably our all-time in fuego leader if you went back and added it. You know, so, you're, you're someone at home probably right. keeps track of these things, yeah. I assume, week in, week out. He's Him probably and the Malik. Leader. Malik Willis, Willis. Yeah, would you're be probably awfully right. close here. But, yeah, 26 points, uh, four assists, four steals. Just a sweet moment. You think of a guy like him. The way that it ended against Kennesaw right. State was just, uh, but you felt like a little bit of a god wink here. You could right. say, he's like, you know, I'm going to give you one last game at home. Comes through, has just a great game. I loved it. He hit it from the NIT logo. Right. You know, another one from deep. Fans from all around were just enjoying it. And a real special moment for him to end it at Liberty Arena on a sweet note. Absolutely. Yeah. Couldn't happen to a better guy. Too. For what sure. a joy it's yeah. been to cover him 100%. throughout his career. All right, yeah. Rhett, great job as Thank always. You. We appreciate it. Stick around. Much more Flame Central still to come. I started looking into just musical theater programs in general, and I saw on Liberty's website that in 2018, they were going to be launching a brand new BFA program in musical theater. It was everything that I wanted out of a school. And I was like, hmm, I've always wanted to go to Liberty, and it just didn't work out. Is God going to take care of this? And he did. We were able to afford it this time around, living off campus. And then that's why I did the Miss Virginia competition because the scholarship. I ended up winning $20,000 that night I won Miss Virginia. Is Tatum Shepard Miss Central Virginia? Miss Virginia? That serving that I learned in church and in my community while I was here in Liberty, all of that encompasses what the Miss America organization is pushing, which is well-rounded individuals who wanna make a difference in their community and the Miss America organization is giving them the resources to do that. They're providing the scholarships that these young accomplished women need to pursue their scholastic ambitions. I feel like my purpose here on this earth is to give back to the community and honor the Lord doing that. Putting in those 20 hours of community service every semester, I was getting that through Big Brothers Big Sisters. For me, it was life-changing. I would bring her to Liberty hockey games. I would bring her here on campus and we'd ride the bird scooters together. So to have that be so a part of my student experience, it's completely taken over my adult life now. It's cool to now be a spokesperson for that program as a former Big Sister. It's crucial for Christians to be stepping into every industry out there. They absolutely need to see what a Christian in the real world looks like and maybe not what their perception of a Christian actually is. And so I love being able to shatter those expectations. God's calling for your life can be specific. And at Liberty, we are committed to equipping you to pursue that calling. Choose from more than 350 unique programs of study or design your own major through interdisciplinary studies and be confident your major is the perfect fit. No matter how specific your calling, you'll find a program of study to match at Liberty University and become your best as a champion for Christ. Well, that's going to about do it for us this week. Hey, next week's show, a big one. Pro Day for Liberty football players. We'll have you covered. Also, spring ball is right. starting up, so we'll have reports from that. Also, be sure you download and subscribe to the Flame Central podcast powered by Alcoa Mortgage. LibertyFlameCentral.com, the website for any stories you might have missed. For Emily, I'm Matt. We'll see you right back here next week.